Hi guys, welcome back to week five as we talk about exploration. So we talked about what led to exploration. So remember our motivations are the three G's, God, glory, and goal. So now we're going to talk about that impact that that had on not only the Americas, but also on Europe and Africa as well. So we're going to start with talking um, mostly about the Americas. And then we're going to talk about the kind of bigger global impact. So there were two major groups of people living in the Americas before the Europeans arrived. And of course, those were, if you remember, the Aztecs, which would have been here in Mexico, and then the Incas, who would have been along the coast of South America following the Andes Mountains in present day Peru, a little bit of Brazil, and so on. Let's move us over here. So the Aztecs, as we remember, we talked about their story the other day. They were in central Mexico and they were conquered by, do you remember the name of the conquistador? So if we think about that C, T, those are kind of the things to help us remember his name. It's Cortez. So the Aztecs, while some of you may not have gotten to them last year in world history because of COVID, remember that they were very, um, all of the peoples of the Americas, the Aztec, Mayas, and Incas, they were all polytheistic. The Aztecs were especially warlike, very, um, <laughs> Very militaristic. They they did sacrifices every day, human sacrifices. They believed that blood basically was necessary in order to make the sun come up every day. And so they would practice human sacrifice every day. Where did they get all these people from? Well, everyone that they conquered, they would take the people as slaves and then use them as human sacrifices. And you can actually see a picture here of a human sacrifice happening. So remember that they had had a prophecy that an Aztec God, this white God that would come and would kind of take the throne again, usher in the end of the world. So one of the things that leads to the demise of the Native Americans is the fact that they do have kind of these prophecies. So when uh, Cortez arrives, they tried to give him gold, make him happy. Uh, but the Spanish are not content with that. They want more. And that's why they came. They came for money. Remember, God, glory, gold. They definitely were there for, for the gold. So Cortez, whose name sometimes is spelled with an S, sometimes with a Z, uh, remember that he um, <laughs> he does a lot of lying and stealing and, and such, and he uh, takes Montezuma. Then uh, um, the Aztecs manage to, um, even though they're greatly outnumbered, or the Aztecs, even though they have the numbers, they are defeated. And why? Of course, because of the advantages that the Spanish have. The exact same thing happens in the Inca Empire with Pizarro. Um, he kidnaps, remember, the king, Atalajapa, and when they pay the ransom, Pizarro kills him anyway. Um, loads of people die in the result of this brutal war, but the Incas are again conquered just like the Aztecs because of the advantages that the Spanish have. And what is that that they have? Well, they have the weapons, guns, horses, and of course, they have much better, um, you know, they have they have iron and steel and these weapons are much better, more and more advanced than what the Native Americans have. And they're also going to bring disease and we're going to talk about that. So we have a little acronym to help us remember what happens here, that the Europeans raced to conquer the Americas. And so we can see here in this picture a Spanish conquistador with a sword here fighting this uh, fierce um, Aztec warrior with a with a wooden bat. And while they can do a lot of damage to that, you know, that's that's not gonna affect the metal armor in the way that the the Spanish would be able to defeat the Native Americans. So our R stands for rigid class system. So once the Europeans come, we notice that remember that the Spanish, as I told you last class, are the ones who really are dominating this European colonization for a long time. And they set up a system that was very strict with um, peninsulares at the top. So this is a hierarchy, just like the caste system. So remember that the people at the top have the most amount of power, but the least amount of people. So peninsulares were, they were actually born in Spain and then came to America and they were the ones who were in charge of everything. Now their children who were born in America, even though they are Spanish, 
were lower class citizens. They were Creoles. And you can imagine eventually the Creoles are going to get tired of this. And we will see that when the colonies do start to fight back. Below them were two groups of people, the mulattoes and the mestizos. The mestizos were a mix of Spanish and Native American, and the mulattoes were African and Spanish. And we're going to see how that Africans came and changed the lives in the Americas as well. So this chart you're going to see again, and it's important to kind of keep in mind, that again, the peninsulars at the top, then we have the Creoles, mulattoes, and mestizos, and then below them would have been slaves and um, Native Americans. They set up a system. It was called the Ecomenda system. They had these large farms called latifundias. And basically the whole idea is that the Spanish would have these large farms and they would protect and care for the Native Americans. And the Native Americans would work the land in, uh, in response for their protection. Um, the, in reality, though, the Spanish forced them to work really long hours. They treated them horribly. Uh, they forced them to convert to Christianity. They wanted them to uh, totally become European in their culture and how they dressed and, and everything. And the Indians, the Native Americans, began to die as a result of the harsh working conditions as well as the disease. Now, the Native Americans, many of them will actually run away. Um, because they are familiar with the land. But Africans are not going to have that, I guess, luxury, if you would, because they're coming into an area that they're unfamiliar with. And so the ability to escape was not as easy for them. Even for the Native Americans, it was very difficult. So this system is, is really going to be very horrible for the Native Americans. Now, you're actually going to be doing an activity later today that is just focused on the Atlantic slave, slave trade and what actually happened during this time. So I'm going to give you a little brief overview. but We are going to do a reading and look some more into this. So our A in our race, we had the rigid class system. Remember the Peninsulares, the Creoles, the Mulattoes, the Mestizos. Um, then our A is Africans were brought to the Americas as slaves. So here's the problem. Native Americans were dying. Actually, large amounts of them were dying. 90% of them were dying off. And the Europeans are starting these like farms, as we've mentioned, and they have what we call labor intensive crops. So they're raising sugar, sugar cane, cotton, tobacco, things that were, are very labor intensive. Okay, My grandfather grew tobacco. It is very labor intensive. You have to have people to pull the tobacco. It is it is hard work. And uh, when I was younger and my, my parents, they worked it. We hired people to come work as well. Um, so they wanted cheap labor source. So they began to seek out slaves to bring to the Americas and they came from Africa. Now, slavery has existed basically since the beginning of time. What is going to be different about slavery that happens in the Americas is it's now going to be based on race. And this is different than kind of any other time in history. And we're going to see how this, this trade worked, but in essence, um, European trade, slave traders would come to the continent of Africa and they would come to different tribes and they would um, barter for slaves. And they brought things like guns and uh, rum and things that the Africans didn't have and wanted. And um, African tribes would conquer other African tribes and sell their enemies. And so it was a horrible process and it is going to have a, a horrible impact on the continent of Africa. They were then taken, you can see here this passage, they were taken then from Africa to the Americas. The majority of them, the vast majority of them landed in the Caribbean. So when you actually look at the people today who live in Jamaica and Haiti and those areas, they are descendants of the Africans who came um, early on. And so they came here and they worked on these, these, these farms. This passage across was called the Middle Passage. Um, and it was a harrowing journey. Uh, the slaves were packed in and they were treated like cargo, property. They were not, they, they were treated like animals and even worse. So this image you can see here, do uh, you see these lines? Those are people. Okay, this is an actual primary source drawing from this time period to show they literally laid down. Each of these are slaves that are laid down um, here in this hot and cramped areas. Um, they weren't often allowed to go up top to get enough air 
a lot of people would actually die on the journey over. And so that's why they packed them in so much because the slave traders were afraid of losing money. This is a horrific system. This is one of those things that as a teacher, it's very hard to talk about because as a, I can't understand the concept of slavery. Like I can understand intellectually that they thought they needed to own people, but morally I can't understand that concept. So as we, we go throughout the year, we will talk about things that are difficult. And I know that it's hard, but it is important to talk about these things that are difficult because this is going to set up a process that is going to, we still see impacts of this in America today. So you guys are going to watch a, a, a little Ted Ed video about the Atlantic slave trade. It's one of the, the better ones that I've seen. I think it does a good job of this. And then you're going to do a reading, read, read oh, and then you're going to have to answer some questions. If you ever wanted to watch a movie, Amistad is one of the best movies that I've ever seen that talks about this issue. It is a difficult movie to watch. Um, we can't show it in class for many reasons. It's rated R. Uh, but if you were interested in learning more about this, that is a good movie portrayal of this early slave trade. All right, so moving on to the the sea. So the colonies copied or imitated the culture of their parent country. And what European country was best at conquering? Well, let's look, it's Spain. And so when we think about like the Americas, think about how much of South America, um, Central America speaks Spanish. And that's because this the Spanish settled there. Um, they're predominantly Catholic. Okay, so they're going to copy those cultures. They're going to bring that with them. They're going to try to build homes and everything like they they had in their colonies in um in, in their home countries, their parent countries. Like even in Virginia, in the American colonies, we have thirteen colonies. We speak English, and um, it's because we were English colonies. So the E Europeans immigrate to the Americas. So they're coming in. You can see here. So the green is Spanish. Brazil here, this was Portuguese. Then this red is the British, and then the blue is the French. Okay, so the Spanish, you can see, had this huge amount of territory. And then our D is diseases killed Native Americans. So again, 90% of Native Americans are killed by disease. And the most common one was smallpox, and that's what the picture I have is of here. This is another reason that Africans were brought over because Africans were immune to the disease of the Europeans because the Europeans and Africans had been trading together for so long. The diseases that affected Europeans did not affect the Africans. And so while the Native Americans were dying, they still needed this uh, the slave labor. And that was the other reason that they specifically sought out Africans. So the four major European countries that raced to conquer the Americas, so we have Spain, who are going to colonize in the Caribbean, so like Jamaica, Haiti, Dominican Republic, and in Latin America, which would be Mexico all the way down into South America. Portugal would specifically have Brazil. The French would take Canada. And then, and they did have some other parts of like Louisiana Purchase, which is the middle of the United States, which they will sell to us later. And we did fight, uh, the British did fight wars with the French to get more land. And then the England uh, or Britain at this point basically has the uh, east coast of the, what is today the United States. All right, so let's move on. I'm going to click through a couple more. We're not going to talk so much about the influence of the colonies. So we're going to move on now and talk specifically about the Columbian exchange and the triangular trade and how this really impacted the area. So not only do we see this and this is the question you want to be thinking about. And this is the question that I left you with last class is, is European exploration, is the, the effects more, does the good outweigh the bad? Because we can all agree there was definitely bad. We 90% of Native American population is wiped out. Uh, African uh, slave trade begins to happen. And so there's definitely negative effects. And the question is, does the good outweigh the bad? This is a lot of what historians discover. And there doesn't have to necessarily be a yes or no answer, um, but it's important to understand that there are both sides of this. So we can talk a little about slave labor here a little bit more about how this impacted on Africa. <clears throat> the Portuguese had set up trading posts originally in Africa. I remember that Prince Henry, the navigator, that was one of his big goals. But then they began to enslave the Africans for labor. 
<clears throat> excuse me, the sugar plantations were the, the biggest kind of money maker in the Caribbean. And then eventually it will also become uh, coffee and tobacco and cotton as well. And so by the 1600s, really just 150 years after Columbus had set sail, um, that was the main focus of any kind of contact with Africa was slave trade. And it's going to take a while for it to end. And we will see it end. It will end, for example, in England before it ends in the United States. Many African kingdoms did participate in the slave trade and, and profited from it. Remember, I told you that some of the tribes actually would uh, would go conquer their enemies and then sell them off to the Europeans. Um, but this pitted African tribes against each other. And the Europeans also would do slave raids and take people unwillingly. And so the, the impact that it had on the native populations was, was horrific. As I mentioned before, the Middle Passage, maybe you can see this picture a little bit better. Um, but in triangular trade, the passage from Africa to the Americas was was the Middle Passage. So what would happen is that Europeans, this is the first the first leg, Europeans would go to Africa. They would trade with them rum and guns and other manufactured goods to get slaves. Then the second leg, they would then travel from Africa to the Americas. Remember, predominantly the Caribbean. Then they, the slaves then would be traded for raw materials like lumber and cotton and sugar. And then it would be transported back to Europe. So the triangular trade is one of these movements that we need to know. And it's a triangle. So we go from Europe to Africa to the Americas. So Europeans, remember, would trade manufactured goods like rum, guns, cloth, like actual, you know, manufactured goods, textiles, any kind of uh, completed products. In exchange, the Middle Passage would then go and take slaves to the Americas. Then the American colonies would provide, provide raw materials like sugarcane, which is then used to make rum. Um, they would provide the wood, uh, all the different things that are then proceeded to make the cotton, all the tobacco, all those things that are used to make manufactured goods that are then sent to Africa and so on. And this continues on. You're going to do an activity where you're going to not only label Europe, Africa, the Americas, but also what's traveling across. So remember, on the first leg, well, the first leg from Europe to Africa, this is manufactured goods, okay, created products like guns and rum are the two biggest ones. Then the middle passage from Africa to the Americas is where slaves were traded. And then from the Americas to Europe, this is where um, sugar tobacco, cotton, lumber, any kind of raw materials or natural resources were traded uh, to the Europeans. So the effects on Africa is, again, the, um, the decrease in population, the destruction of African culture, and then an increase in conflicts between the African tribes and states because they were competing against with the Europeans. Remember that the reason that Africans were brought into this is because they were more immune to the diseases than Native Americans. So remember that 90% of the Native American population is going to be wiped out. They are exploited and they are treated horribly as well and made into slaves as well. Of all of this, the most kind of positive thing is a global exchange called the Columbian Exchange. It is named after Christopher Columbus because remember what makes Christopher Columbus significant is his big mouth that starts this global aid of trade. So there were goods that came from Europe that the Americas didn't have. Remember I told you that in America there were no horses. Horses are not native to America. They come from Europe and Asia. So they brought with them horses. They also brought with them cattle. So again, there was no, there, there were no, um, there were no uh, cows here. You know, where, where did they get their milk? Well, it came from goats and llamas. And uh, they didn't have things like wheat. So flour is something that was, they made any kind of bread was all corn based. They had corn meal. Um, and so they would have cornbread or uh, uh, corn tortillas. So corn though is gonna change the diet of Europeans. I will tell you another big thing that's really gonna change the diet of the Europeans and that is potatoes. Potatoes can be used so many different ways and are a much hardier crop and is really going to have a huge impact on Europe. 
So this Columbian exchange is an exchange between the old world and the old world would be Europe and this new world, the new discovery would be the Americas. So plants and animals that had only been on one place or the other are now going to be exchanged. So here's some other examples. So in the old world, wheat, sugar, rice, coffee, horses, cows, pigs. So I like to think of what's your favorite meal? So like my go-to, like if it's my birthday and I get to pick what I want, I want my mama to make me fried pork chops and I want some fried apples. I want sweet potatoes. Okay. And for dessert, I want me some pumpkin pie. So let me think about this for a minute. Could I have had this in the, in the like 1500s? Well, if I lived in the new world, I could have had pumpkin. My pie crust would not have existed because that comes from flour, which came from the old world. I couldn't have had pig, okay? Instead, I would have to eat llama or deer or uh, guinea pig, which was very popular in the Inca empire. And uh, so so a lot of those things that we really like, uh, they came from, from Europe, things we take for granted. You like, you like a good old bacon cheeseburger? That is something that definitely would have come from the old world. Now, sweet potatoes, they, they definitely had those. They would have had pumpkins, things like that. Um, and, and apples probably came from the new world as well. And so um, when we think about the top things that are traded, the old world gives us horses and cattle and then the bad thing, disease. And then we, the new world, what do we give the old world? Our top things are, and we're talking about the big three things that like changed lives would be corn, potatoes, and tobacco because tobacco is going to become a cash crop. So here's a couple of others. So here's some of the diseases. The one disease that the new world had was syphilis. For example, Christopher Columbus, that's what he actually dies from. He contracted that from the new world. And while he made four voyages, he eventually dies from this disease that he got from the new world. So what did they have in the, in the new world? Turkeys, llamas, alpacas, guinea, guinea pigs. So turkeys is really the only animal that's going to go back to Europe. Uh, we're going to really benefit from a lot of things that they had. And you could see this the same well with plants, all of those different things. It's really kind of amazing. You may even want to pause it for a moment and kind of look at all these different ones. So let's think about a couple of questions here. Which of the following was not exchanged from the Western Hemisphere to the East? So the West, that's going to be what? That's going to be the New World, and the East is going to be the Old World. So as I'm looking at this list, what doesn't belong? Well, it's smallpox. Smallpox is something that the old world, the Eastern Hemisphere, gave the new world. The lifestyle of Native Americans was changed with the introduction of what? Well, the two animals that are going to make the hugest difference in the lives of Native Americans are going to be horses and cattle. All you got to think about is the Plains Native Americans and using those horses uh, to run and hunt down buffalo. European lifestyles change significantly with the introduction of what? Well, it's going to be, remember, potatoes. So we're going to look for that answer that has potatoes in it. It's going to be A, corn, tobacco, and potatoes. I love this image because I'm very visual. And so I love this with the Columbian Exchange. So you can definitely see the, the things that came. Like my brother loves bananas. Those came from, from Europe. So, so many things that I really like, oranges and uh, coffee, uh, horses, uh, onions, peaches, pigs, rice, all those things came from the, remember, this is the old world and then the new world here. You're going to do an activity where you're going to have to sort where things go. You're going to have to label the old world, label the new world. So remember, the new world is giving this big three, corn, tobacco, and potatoes. And the old world, their big three are horses, cattle, and diseases. The last thing is uh, something just to keep in mind. We'll talk about this more later, but there's a new economic system of this time period. And this is basically is that your wealth of your success of your country is married in your wealth, how much money that you have, um, how much gold and silver. And the whole purpose of a colony was to make money for its parent country. And we'll see this a little bit later when we talk about the American Revolution, how that this becomes a bit of an issue. But it's another little thing to keep in mind. All right, so you've got a couple of activities you can um, uh, to spread out from today and tomorrow, basically, but you need to um, take care of the Atlantic slave trade. And then you also have an activity with the Columbian exchange and the triangular trade.